we can now ask what the deadweight losses that arise from adverse selection might actually look like. And we'll do it with an example, the example of car insurance. So on the horizontal axis, we have car insurance. And as we move to the right, the car insurance policies become increasingly generous. We have two kinds of drivers, risky drivers and safe drivers. Where risky drivers are more likely to get into an accident and therefore more likely to cost the insurance company money. So the expected marginal cost of serving risky drivers is going to be higher than the expected marginal cost of serving safe drivers. Now, if insurance companies can tell who are the safe drivers and who are the risky drivers, they'll simply treat them differently. There'll be separate markets for car insurance for risky drivers and for safe drivers. And if those markets are competitive, then insurance companies are going to price where price is equal to marginal cost. So risky drivers are going to get a high price and safe drivers are going to get a low price. As a result, risky drivers are going to buy relatively less generous insurance policies than safe drivers, at least if their demand curves are roughly similar. Now, what if I can't tell the difference between the two drivers? Well, then I can't treat them separately. And what we call a separating equilibrium can't emerge. So a separate equili separating equilibrium can only emerge if we can tell the difference between these different types of drivers. But if we can't, we're going to have to treat them all the same as part of the same pool. And so we call that a pooling equilibrium. Now in a pooling equilibrium, we're going to end up charging a single price for car insurance because we can't tell who's a safe and unsafe driver. And if the industry is competitive, then that'll be a zero profit price. And it'll end up being be between the two prices that we would charge in the separating equilibrium because we're going to get some safe drivers and some risky drivers buying insurance from us. And so things are going to have to average out in terms of a zero profit price. So the zero profit pooling price will be somewhere in between these two prices, which is going to mean that safe drivers are now going to buy less generous insurance than they did before. And risky drivers are going to buy more generous insurance than they did before. That's going to be the source of the deadweight loss. Because if you look at the demand curve, which we can treat as a marginal benefit curve, we can see for these additional levels of car insurance, the marginal benefit to the driver is less than the marginal cost. So for each of these additional levels of car insurance, Marginal cost is less, marginal cost is greater than the marginal benefit, and so there's a deadweight loss from every one of these policies that's get, that gets sold. For safe drivers, the opposite happens. The safe drivers buy too little insurance. The last insurance level that they buy had a marginal benefit that was greater than the marginal cost, and the next level is going to have a marginal benefit that's greater than the marginal cost. So by stopping here, we're not getting this possible surplus that we could be getting. Deadweight losses arise because the safe drivers buy too little insurance and the risky drivers buy too much insurance when they're put into the same pool and charged the same price. So that's where the deadweight losses are coming from. Now, how do we get to a separating, separating equilibrium if we're currently in a pooling equilibrium. Well, there are two possible ways that information could be revealed when it's not obvious. So if it's not obvious who the safe and unsafe drivers are, it could be that the safe drivers simply signal to the insurance companies that they're safe. They provide evidence that they're safe. And as long as it's sufficiently costly to lie about what kind of driver you are and sufficiently cheap to tell the truth about what kind of driver you are, signaling can reveal information that will allow insurance companies to know 
who the safe and who the unsafe drivers are, and therefore separate them again into different markets. If it's really easy to lie, if it's really easy to pretend to be a safe driver when you're actually a risky driver, then the signals won't have any information because everybody will simply signal that they're safe drivers. So it has to be sufficiently more expensive for the risky drivers to lie about what kind of driver they are in order for signaling to be able to reveal the kind of information necessary for insurance companies to then treat the two markets as separate once again. The other way that we could reveal information is by having insurance companies screen the applicants. So in the case of signals, it's the uh, drivers who signaled whether they were safe or not. In the case of screens, it's the insurance companies that engage in effort to try to figure out whether the applicant is safe or risky. Now, there are a few things to realize about that. There's, it's going to be costly to screen applicants. So that screening cost is going to somehow have to be passed on to the consumers of car insurance. But it can't be passed on to the risky drivers because there could always be another insurance company that emerges and says, we're not going to screen. We're just going to sell insurance at this high magenta price. So there's no way we can ever charge the risky drivers a higher price than that to pass the screening cost on to them. The highest price we can charge them is that magenta price. So all the screening costs are going to have to be passed on to the safe drivers. So their price is going to be higher if the screening results in information that allows us to have a separating equilibrium. It's going to be higher than it would be if there hadn't been a cost of revealing the information. And so they're going to bear the cost of the screening. So that screening cost, of course, can't be too large because if it's too large and we pass it on and that price rose above that pooling price, then we wouldn't be able to screen effectively. It would be too expensive to reveal that information. So the screening cost would have to be sufficiently low so that we can still pass it on to safe drivers and keep their price below what it would be in the pooling equilibrium.